cultures may have lots in common. Yet remember, two magnets with the same polarity do not stick together. They say that differences are dangerous, yet seven stripes on the same color will never make a rainbow. Don't be deceived by similarities, but don't focus too much on the differences. Devil is in the details. Same but different series aims to show what national cultures have in common, what makes them different, and how both the similarities and differences influence the way we do business. If you are late, they have no problem telling you you are late and you are wasting our time. It took me a few months to realize that my manager wasn't mean or angry when I messed up. He was just brutally honest. For Germans, a situation may be serious, but never hopeless. And for Austrians, a situation may be hopeless, but never serious. Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode of our podcast series, Same but Different. I'm Oksana Hera from SoftServe Cross-Cultural Communication Center, and it's a great pleasure to introduce our guest and my dear colleague, Ola Moroz. Ola, thanks for joining me today. Hi, Oksana. My pleasure to be here. Looking forward to this conversation. Ola has been with SoftServe for many years and has collected lots of insights of how communication in German may differ depending on where and who you are talking with. I would say even more than that. I think that nine years at SoftServe and my 20 years experience of teaching German to some extent influenced my personal way of communication too. And during this time, I've been interested in not only teaching people German, but also studying the peculiarities of the German-speaking environment, getting interesting insights from my students about the challenges they faced when starting to work with clients or colleagues from Germany, Austria or Switzerland, comparing it with my own experience and exploring in more detail communication in these cultures. Brilliant! What if we start with a couple of quick yes or no questions to give our listeners a taste of what we'll be sharing today? Sounds interesting. Let's do it. Let's start then. If people in Germany and Austria speak German, do they have the same worldview? No. Definitely not. Are people in Germany and Austria very direct in their communication? Jein. Oh, that's a new word for me. It means yes and no in German. Right. Are Germans and Austrians very punctual? Yes, the majority of Germans and Austrians are punctual. Do you have to develop any personal relationship to do business in Austria and Germany? Personal relationships may be established later when a high level of trust appears. This takes a long time. And this is not at all what is needed at the beginning of efficient cooperation with representatives of these cultures. Fine. If my German team likes my jokes, can I use them with my Austrian colleagues? If your team likes your jokes in meetings, it's definitely not a German team. Okay. Doing business with Germans and Austrians is taking it slow as they are not flexible, right? Jein. Sounds great, Olga. Is there anything else you would like to add before we move on? Perhaps uh, there is one point. If we are talking about Germany and Austria, it's important not to forget that these are two different countries. When you hear someone speaking English, you probably don't automatically assume they are from Canada or the US. The same goes for Austria. Remember to pause before you assume that someone is from Germany because they speak German. 
do some extra homework about the differences between Austrians and Germans. They don't appreciate being mistaken for their neighbors. This seems like the perfect moment to reveal more communication gems. I'm sure you have plenty of examples to share with us, Ola. I think I have collected some. I hope they will be relevant and useful to our listeners. All right then. What about punctuality in Germany and Austria? If we talk about punctuality, it depends a little bit on uh, your company or and your job, obviously. But let's say you are expected to be at work at nine. If you open the door and enter the building at nine, you are late. You have to be ready to work at nine. If we are talking about an online meeting, you should join the meeting one, two minutes earlier. Be ready. I mean, with your camera on, wearing something appropriate so it doesn't look like you just got out of the shower or out of bed. And have all necessary materials ready for the meeting so that you don't have to look for them on your computer. I see. What if for some reason you don't do this? If you are not punctual for meetings, for example, it's very disrespectful. I mean, you would be wasting the other person's time. So if you are not used to being on time, I think you will get used to being on time because Germans are very honest, not only in life, but also at work. If you are late, they have no problem telling you you are late and you are wasting our time with this really serious face. And that's what their feedback is like. Speaking of being serious, some people share their observations of participating in meetings with German colleagues and clients. And the conversations there seem like arguments to many. Some even say that going for drinks after work in many cases seems impossible. Yet it's just part of the game. There is a belief in German business culture that conflicts are inevitable, since there are always opposing interests. But after an open confrontation, it's easier to breathe because conflicts are like thunderstorm diffuse the atmosphere. Sounds quite poetic. One of my students once shared, it took me a few months to realize that my manager wasn't mean or angry when I messed up. He was just brutally honest. Brutally honest. I think it's a memorable way to describe this case, Ola. In terms of being straightforward and direct, how similar are German and Austrian cultures? When establishing communication with German colleagues, it's worth remembering the division into high and low context cultures. What does it mean? Low context cultures separate their personal relationship, work and other aspects of everyday life and therefore require a detailed and clear presentation of basic information each time they interact. High context cultures have an extensive information network among the participants in the communication process and do not expect detailed and comprehensive information on the issue because they are already informed about everything related to people and events that are important in their lives. Germans represent a low context culture and need a large amount of information with uh, all the details, even the tiniest ones. The German style of communication is direct communication without undercurrents, special diplomacy or hints. I imagine this can be potentially 
very dangerous because it can cause miscommunication, especially when speakers prefer to be softer or less direct. True, but hints are not understood in German. Directly and openly said no in German, eyes is more acceptable than yes, which often used by many foreign partners in the sense of maybe, probably, if it works out. In this case, difficulties in communication with Germans are inevitable. Because uh, by yes, sometimes said for a reason of politeness or out of habit, German partners almost always understand consent, a promise to do the work, and the fulfillment of the promise. Ola, and how is it reflected, let's say, in the feedback you can get from an Austrian? With the feedback from Austrians, it's a little bit different. Austrians don't act impulsively. They communicate often not directly, but very politely, even if they think completely differently. They love humor and like to joke. We need to calmly activate our humorous side and learn to read between the lines, to recognize a no or yes, even if it's not stated openly. An overly direct, outright expression of opinion can be perceived as being tactless. Oh, finally, there is room for humor. <laughs> How acceptable is it in business communication in these cultures? It's Austrian philosophy that a good job can be done only in calm and relaxed environment. A couple of jokes and some small talks are also present in business communication. However, the emphasis here is on small. In business life, in official relation, such communicative tools as irony, sarcasm, or humor are less often used. From the German point of view, they make it difficult to be clear and prevent the assessment of how serious the argument is. For Germans, a situation may be serious, but never hopeless, and for Austrians, a situation may be hopeless, but never serious. With all of these factors at play, how to establish communication with our clients? First of all, you must have a thick skin so that you can take on a challenge without being offended. The key in intercultural communication is the principle of adaptation. Adapting to the client you work with and adapting to the place where you are. And the second one, don't take feedback personally. It's not about you. It's about the process, task or arrangements and opportunities to improve or optimize them. Now that's why it may get complicated. If it is never about you personally, does it mean relationship building is not important in business with these cultures? Germans clearly separate personal life and work. It takes a lot to go beyond the work environment with a co-worker, like going for a beer or inviting some, someone to your house. This is a very big step. I would say that usually happens after a year or so. I have multiple stories of this, that there is an event after work and then I have a beer or something with a German colleague. We have a really good conversation, we are laughing, um, you know, like we are bonding. And I'm like, oh, really, I get to know another side of my coworker. What did I see like so, you know, serious in office sometimes? And then what happens? Monday comes along and I'm very happy saying, hey, good morning. And they just say back to me, morning. Like, did the person forget that we shared some beers and we had some fun? Oh, that may be even awkward. 
That's true, Oksana. That's true. The same in cooperation with the client. A nice dinner every day after work, organizing his after work time, informal meetings with the team so that the client gets to know all the team members, gifts, and so on. This is something that does not work in Germany. If you come to the client, they will basically organize an one joint dinner and then spend a whole time only at work. It's not because they are not hospitable. It's just that works, work is work. And private life is a closed territory only for a limited circle of closed people. And in Austria, it's different, right? Austrians are open for communication and almost every single company in Austria organizes various celebrations throughout the year. If you can, you should join these parties. They give you the possibility to have informal chit-chat with the highest management in the company and with your colleagues. By participating, you confirm that you are part of the team. Sounds inspiring. Basically, relationships are established through friends or friends of friends in business. This happens through Vitamin B, Bekanschaft, uh, which stands for acquaintance. Um, they prefer the introduction through the third party. It's impossible to simply come after offer your services and win an Austrian client. If you want to get a new client in Austria, look for someone among your influential clients who can put in a good word for you and introduce you to a potential client. Even further, They will continue to develop personal relationships uh, with people who they conduct business with as soon as trusting relationships begin to be established. But it will take time. It all takes time. And we are running out of time as well. Ola, what would you say to motivate our listeners to develop their communication? No matter what you heard about Germans and Austrians, they like to communicate with other people. Maybe a little bit differently from the way you are used to, but they like it and they do it. So if you are confronted with any type of problem or conflict, just talk to people and usually they will be open, honest and helpful. Thanks so much, Ola. And a huge thank you to you, our listener. Stay tuned for more.